So whether you're at home or here in the Shrine Room, uh, let's continue this journey into sensing what's happening for us in our, our bodies now. Okay. So whether you're at home or in the Shrine Room, just start to take a notice of what's around you, where you are. It may be that um, turning away from your screen, if there's a screen in front of you helps. It may be that just looking um, at what's around you helps. It might be um, just simply being still and letting your awareness um, guide you deeper into the present moment is, is um, what helps you. And during this initial um, five, ten minutes, it's also an opportunity if you are finding that your position um, is getting intense in any part of your body, um, sometimes known as uncomfortable, but, um, but if your position is getting intense in any part of your body, um, it is an opportunity to do some shifting around and moving, um, bringing more ease. Um, alternatively, if you're finding your body is, you're losing touch of your body, you're too comfortable, it's too soft, um, what you're sitting on, then, um, then you might want to shift not to make yourself uncomfortable, but to bring more alertness and connection to your body as well. So, so just, you know, feel, feel yourself as a journey of settling into your present moment being here and now. So our um, theme today, um, theme for the practice, our Buddhist practice is uh, metta bhavna, cultivation of um, metta, loving kindness. Um, and metta loving kindness is um, quite um, vibrant and intense and, and full of um, energy, um, positive feeling um, and um, that emerges from our being sometimes with the, the kernel of friendliness, so just the sort of the intent, the hope, the wish for something better in our lives, something of friendliness towards ourselves. Um, so maybe as I'm speaking now it may be that um, you might become curious about what that might be for yourself in your own life. So just um, reflecting, what, what is it that might be a feeling of friendliness towards yourselves or each other here? Um, what may it be like to welcome your own hopes and aspirations in your own life in a kind of friendly way? Just starting to feel that, and and um, uh, there may be a sense of friendliness emerging. And at moments during the practice, it may be that this sense of friendliness grows. It may be that the sense of friendliness feels a bit distant at times. But either way, there's this sense of cultivating a continuity of intention continuity of intention towards um, a blossoming and expansive friendliness and um, the whole potential of that so, so even if that sense of friendliness fades or the sense of friendliness grows, waxes and wanes, just staying in touch as best as you can with the intention, coming back over and over to that intention and aspiration. Okay, so um, We'll start the practice in a moment, but first, first to help um, build a sense of energy for the practice to sustain us through the practice, um, you 
are welcome if you wish to um, yeah lie down we can do a 10 minute lying down body scan if you want to um, or if you want to you can do a body scan sitting up so I will stay sitting up because if I lie down you're not going to see me on the camera but um, if I was at home you'd see me disappear under the camera and my knees would just be sticking up so if you if you feel you'd like to lie down for 10 minutes in the room you can just find a space you feel shy that's good and if you're at home and you're feeling um, like you've got space you may want to do that yeah okay so just a 10 minute just checking in with the body checking in with the body so eyes open or closed reminding ourselves of our connection with our intention and here we are in the shrine room we've got the Buddha here the Buddha right next to me and um, Patna Prabha symbolizing symbolizing sort of like the the, the deepest cultivation of positivity, energy, and wisdom. It's a deep aspiration for us. So it might be also that you bring to mind any teachings, any teachings that you've had. Or maybe even any teachers or people that have inspired you with their friendliness or their kindness people that have helped and guided us along our way and then also bringing to mind um, our community community our friends maybe even the people who wrote books that we we've read that have inspired us or each other here each other in our homes it's holding each other in mind okay and then from here we're just continuing with that sense of body embodiedness sometimes I like to start with the heart so we're holding people in mind um, is sort of for me sort of slash mind heart feeling a sense of connection in your heart with where you are and each other in your heart and with the heart space there's that embodied sense of breathing so if that helps for you to put your hand on your heart or find a place where you can feel your breath it may be that you want to deepen your breath maybe your breath is just fine the way it is but just feel that connection with the air moving in and out of the body and uh, there's always this option here to be still or to to move so sometimes when I feel the breath I want to stretch a bit feel a breath in my body if you are choosing to move it might be that you want to move in in sync with the breath breathing in and breathing out it's just helping loosen up the spine Getting a sense of connection and balance. And then from the breath and any movement of the body, there's also the, the next um, deepening maybe into that where the body's in contact with the ground with the earth 
your mat, your the floor. All these things are just names, but investigating the experience as it arises and passes in this moment, that which we call this connection with the ground may be some sensations that are not so easy to put into words. It might be that sense of pressure with the ground underneath you. It might be an energetic connection with the earth itself. Maybe a sense of that um, steady presence of the earth. Maybe some tingling sensations from the body. And it may be that in the midst of all of this, the mind is wandering. And um, if that's happening, that's, you know, it's part of the experience. And it may be that it helps to um, name the the, what the, the uh, activity such as earth connecting with earth connecting with body connecting with breath and breathing Here we are galvanizing our body awareness to sustain us through the, the Metta Bhavna practice. Okay, feeling ready, ready to being, begin. So cultivating that sense of friendliness towards experience. First stage of the Metta Bhavna, we will be um, cultivating uh, friendliness towards ourselves for about five minutes. And then I'll ring a bell and we'll cultivate friendliness, noticing that quality of friendliness towards a friend, a good friend. Another five minutes, another bell. And the third stage, so I'll do a bit of guiding for this so you don't need to remember this all right now. We bring to mind a neutral person, someone um, someone that uh, maybe just pass by in the street or maybe in our local shop or someone that we're, we're not really too friendly with or we don't really, sort of a bit neither friendly nor unfriendly towards them. And so we bring this person to mind and uh, cultivate goodwill, friendliness, metta towards this person. Just remembering there's that sense of the continuity of intention for friendliness. So when we get to the fourth stage where we bring to mind someone with whom friendliness may be more challenging, maybe some difficulty or some miscommunication. So you bring this fourth per this person to mind, sometimes known as the difficult person or person with whom there's some difficult communication. 
And once again, reminding ourselves the intention to cultivate friendliness, And then the final stage of the Metta Bhavna, we bring ourselves, the friend, the neutral person, the difficult person, all of us to mind. And um, if it helps, you can imagine the Metta like a beam um, of intention and you're directing it, um, or it's, a, it's being directed rather than one having to put any particular effort in that um, friendliness is available for all it's an infinite unlimited resource friendliness is available for all and um, then we um, the last stage we, um, we, we intend friendliness for all of us here in the room or each other at home and each other at home and the people in our lives and we extend that out outwards and there may be a moment where we glimpse this um, uh, vast potential of loving kindness uh, in the practice. So, let, let us begin. The Metta Bhavna. Friendliness towards ourselves, the first stage. Sitting, breathing, grounding. Connecting with ourselves with a sense of friendliness. it helps to um, wish ourselves well may I be well may I be happy may any pain and discomfort be eased may I be well And gradually finding the thread of the intention of friendliness. Finding the thread of the intention of friendliness and well wishing and kindness and loving kindness. Just gently, moment by moment, following this thread. Following this thread of an intention of friendliness. And in the kernel of this friendliness is the potential blossoming and growing of a deeper and deeper loving kindness. kindness that may shine forth for all beings, starting with ourselves.
thread disappears, just know it's there, the intention, picking it up again. And again, following this thread, friendliness. friendliness towards ourselves here and now doing the best we can in the midst of life and all its complexities thread of friendliness towards ourselves <laughs> and staying with this friendliness this intention towards bringing a friend to mind, keeping that thread of intention for friendliness, bringing a friend to mind, the second stage. May our friend be well. May there be happiness in the life of this friend. Feeling the thread of friendly intentions this friend be well. May this friend be happy, peace, freedom from suffering,
the thread of friendliness. May our friend be well. be goodwill and joy for this friend. Feeling that thread of continuity with the friendliness. This will, this intention. Just gently moving to the third stage. Bringing to mind a person, a neutral person. They also be well and happy. May they also be free from suffering and may there be peace in their lives. be well. May there be kindness, kindness and friendliness for this person. This person who is not yet known particularly well. Sensing that thread, that um, intentionality of kindness, of metta. Maybe the thread feels more tenuous, maybe it feels stronger. moment by moment. Wishing 
friendliness towards this neutral person. thread of metta, a thread of kindness, a stream, a shining, a blazing forth may they be well, may they be happy gently still flowing with this thread this stream of friendliness however it's showing up here and now just noticing that there is this friendly intention with this friendly intention moving towards the fourth stage bringing to mind someone with whom there may have been some communication difficulty friendliness towards this the difficult person May they be well. Sensing the thread of friendly intention. May they be happy. be free from suffering may there be peacefulness and joy in this person's life May they be well. Just reconnecting, gently sensing that thread of friendly intention. be well.
sometimes in this part it's helpful to remember the thread of metta still resonates for all beings including ourselves even bringing to mind a person with whom there's difficulty there's still that thread of continuity of metta for all beings so there's space to wish them well may they be well May they be happy. May their own suffering be eased. Staying with the thread of meta of friendliness. Coming to the fifth stage, bringing ourselves to mind. More clearly, once again, bringing our friend to mind and the neutral person and the difficult person. And that thread, that um, connection with the intention for friendliness being there for all of us ourselves, a friend, neutral, difficult person the thread, sense, the intention of friendliness towards all, all of us May we all be well, may we all be happy, may our sufferings be eased, may freedom from suffering be found. And the thread of metta extends to all of us here in this moment breathing here sitting on the earth on the ground in this moment whether in the room or at home or wherever we are may we all be well and staying with that intention for friendliness and loving kindness Maybe we'll be well. Maybe we'll be happy. May our intention of friendliness grow, grow extending throughout all the people around us in our city, our country, the planet, just keep on growing throughout all time and space for all beings, all beings, human, non-human, all beings. May they all be well. Just sensing that intention, that hope, that blazing forth of loving kindness. Fast, unbounded in all directions, above, below, to all sides.
May they will be well. May we all be well. We will be well. Just taking a few moments to, you know, if you feel like you need a transition back into. Sometimes I feel there's all that meta, and I'm just like pressing it into, you know, feeling your body, that kindness. Just like reminding yourself you're here, and seeing each other in the room. Yes, good. Welcome back. <laughs> well, not that we went anywhere to start with, but great. Thank you. Um, so that was the Metta Bhavna practice, if, you're, if it was new for you. Um, uh, cultivation of Metta, loving kindness, Bhavna, kind of cultivation becoming, evolving in it. So the idea is, you know, your intention connects to your heart, connects to your mind, connects to your actions, and then the way we respond to each other. So it's growing the intention eventually starts to manifest outwards. So, for, so, yes, you're very welcome, Anna. Very welcome. Just seen her message. So, um, yes, announcements. We have a few announcements um, um, from, from Jenny and Graham, and then they'll come back to me. Great. So, while we're sitting here, coming back, we will shift over to the voice of Jenny. Thanks, Bernadette. Hi, everyone. You're welcome. And hi, everyone center um i don't know about anyone else but i'm tired today so that drilling in the background was certainly a test of my method giving um i'm happy to report i i had an internal laugh and i threw some meta their way so something's going right um yeah i'm going to post some links in the chat there um monday um is the launch of BAM, which starts for Buddhist Action Month. Um, so yeah, the North London Buddhist Centre, that is our launch night. Um, and that's going to happen, um, it's Sangha night. And we're going to be joined by um, a really, really impressive guest speaker, um, uh, an order member by the name of Parami. And she's well known for um, being quite outspoken in terms of social injustice, environmental matters. Um, so if you're interested in um, how, you know, your Buddhist practice or your Buddhist practice and your meditation practice can be used in the world to kind of, um, you know, create some change, then it might be well worth going along and, and hearing her talk. We'll show, we'll, you know, she'll talk about some of her own experiences and, and she's what, what she's done in the world. Um, and that is called The Lion's Roar, Speaking Up in a Troubled World. So yeah, Monday night, 7 p.m. Um, and also part of um, Buddhist Action Month, the North London Buddhist Centre has decided to 
do some morning meditations um, and that starts on the 14th of June. So if you're looking to set your day up in the right way um, and do it connecting with others, which often helps to create you know, a practice which is regular um, and one I think where you can get deeper into meditation, I often find it's far um, easier and far more um, impactful to, to meditate with others. So that starts at um, 7.50, you can join and, and it's for an eight o'clock start and it's only for 45 minutes. Um, so you've got some time if you're at work and working from home to have 15 minutes to grab a coffee and get your head in work mode. And um, so, yeah, that's not this Monday, the following Monday, um, starting, yeah, a, a 7.50 connect to, for an eight o'clock start. And that's open to um, newcomers and people who've been meditating for years uh, and all online. Um, and the final thing to tell you about is our course, which starts on Tuesday called Understanding Life, the Buddha's Radical Vision. Um, yeah, I, I don't know where to start with that. I mean, I guess I was finding it quite difficult to meditate there and I ended up just lying back and looking at the clouds. Um, and I was just watching them go past and, and looking at these shapes and, and also the distance, the clouds were sitting at different levels and I hadn't really noticed and it started to make me think about how, um, you know, we run an automatic mode and we label things and don't really look at anything. And I guess without Buddhism and particularly courses, which are introductory courses to Buddhist concepts, then I wouldn't have that moment of awe and wonder. Um, yeah, and, and then a little voice said, you know, well, so what, it's just clouds. But actually, you know, that moment of wonder and awe certainly beats the rest of my time, which is either pushing things away I don't like or trying to run after things in my life that I'm trying to get. So yeah, there is something really precious and I wouldn't have noticed any of that um, had I not been doing these courses and, and reading and um, about Buddhism so yeah that's a great course to kind of um, deep dive into some concepts on Buddhism and how to really apply them in your life um, so yeah that's enough for me but yeah you can keep up to date on everything we do via our newsletter and also social media uh, which we are on on Facebook Instagram and YouTube um, and yes I shall pass